Caddis Maximus here again. This time we're doing a quick review and comparison of the Harbor Freight 43060 uh, electronic router speed controller. And I'm going to be comparing this against a true, uh, I wouldn't say variable speed, variable output power device, a Variac or variable uh, AC transformer. Now, these things are pretty handy. There's various grades. There's certainly some pretty expensive ones. I've seen ones that are over $100 uh, that have some pretty nice circuitry and will, will truly allow you to vary from uh, zero or completely off up to full speed. The slightly cheaper ones, and I'm not exactly sure how the more expensive ones work. I haven't opened one up. Uh, but these cheaper ones are essentially what's inside a variable speed drill, for instance, or what's in the trigger of one of those. Uh, and they put that into a box and they give you a little bit larger of a circuit and a metal back as a heat sink and put a knob on it. So that's essentially what this is. They are called, uh, I believe, triax. And how they work is they just kind of cut off the AC waveform, which is a little bit of a uh, cumbersome way. I shouldn't say cumbersome, but it's a less than optimal way because uh, when you're in those variable speed modes where the AC is just being cut off versus where it's still a nice smooth AC signal just being shrunk down, uh, the motors don't quite behave the same. You don't get essentially the same linearity, or I should say fineness of control. And another issue of these is even when they're turned all the way up, they still don't quite deliver full power. And this one actually has a neat little switch where it has a bypass just to run at full power variable, which I kind of like because you can do an operation where you're at a medium speed and then uh, immediately switch it to full speed to, to maybe do a final cut for uh, finishing. And when this thing is turned all the way up and you switch it to full, you can hear just a slight boost in the motor output. And I should mention that these are not to be used with any kind of real digital electronics. You do not want to use these with a modern variable speed router because those would have an electronically controlled or electronic feedback or constant power speed control and you can actually damage them running these. And certainly don't want to plug in other types of consumer electronics. Don't ever like plug in uh, things, stereo equipment or anything like that. This would be a surefire way to ruin those kind of electronics. Anything that's digital really wants it just to be turned on and off. They don't like partial uh, voltages because that can cause them to overload drawing too much current. And uh, a lot of times it's stereo shops and people who maybe work on vacuum tube equipment where you'd use a variable AC transformer. That would actually be one of the rare situations in which you would use a variable or a variac. Definitely not one of these. And I just wanted to point that out. Now, I don't do a lot of electronic repair, and I actually have a Variac for uh, just because it allows you uh, to have a very fine speed control versus this, as well as knowing that this is actually just shrinking down the AC, the, the sine wave, but it still remains a nice sine wave, and at lower speeds, motors tend to run a little cooler than they do with these. That being said... Uh, these wouldn't be compatible, say, with a variable speed drill when you're in the variable speed portion of the trigger. If you could use one of these with this, a variable speed drill, um, but you need to first pull the trigger on the drill and then lock it in the full speed mode on those kind of power tools. When you go all the way, they actually just click a switch and bypass their little internal electronics to run at full power. And in that case, it's just a standard... Uh, brush type universal motor with no other circuits and then you can use one of these but generally speaking they say don't use these and that's what the little warning here is don't use on uh, brushless type motors don't use on soft slow start routers that tells you that it would have electronics and other variable speed tools if, because you don't want to run two of these units uh, next to each other and cause say the trigger to want to get burned up there just isn't a whole lot to talk about these units. This Harbor Freight is a knockoff of a carbon, uh, common one. It does say it's rated at 15 amps by 120 volts, so uh, definitely a pretty powerful rating. They do use a uh, aluminum dial, which I will say I appreciate that. It does feel like a pretty solid switch, although this whole thing's rated for 15 amps. They do have a replaceable fuse in case it does get overloaded. It's just a simple little tiny uh, tube fuse there, but it's pretty easy to access. Let's give this thing a little, uh, although this thing doesn't really want to screw in. There we go. Let's give this thing a little demonstration. I'll show you what I mean here. We'll do two demonstrations. One will be a simple light bulb demonstration. 
Excuse me. Here we go. And this will kind of make it easier to see, if I can get this in the correct direction, uh, what the, the limitations. And one of the things that frustrates me about this unit is how it doesn't uh, really start off from zero, which sometimes you may want, where you just want to make a, especially with the router, you may want to make just a super light little touch cut, uh, nice and easy. And you may want a lower speed. And this thing kind of is annoying because it really varies from about 50% to uh, more or less 100%. So we're now at the lowest speed. We'll turn it on. And evidence from the light bulb, it's getting pretty bright at the very lowest power output. I am using a 100 watt tungsten bulb, the good old band light bulb. It's a resistive load, so it's fine to use with these. And as we can see, as we go up in speed, we can see that the light bulb gradually gets more power. And it, you can see it's not super linear. It's not very bright. It's getting a little brighter. Uh, I'm getting way up into the range, getting a little brighter, a little brighter. I'm almost halfway up into the range. You can see now when I go from, I went from 180 degrees of turn on the dial, yet it didn't really seem like the light bulb increased, the brightness increased that much. But now when I go the rest of the amount, this thing only turns about 270 degrees, we can see that we get a dramatic increase in output. Now, I don't know if this will show. No, I can't really show the difference when you switch it from full to low power, but we'll do another demonstration in a second here. Light bulbs are good heaters. Here's another demonstration. I don't normally use these with routers, but I did get these to use with die grinders like these, just because uh, oftentimes I, you know, you use these at full power, and then when you're done doing your grinding, it's kind of convenient to put a stone in one of these to use it as deburring. But you would know that uh, deburring with a die grinder at full speed, like this 20,000 or 19,000 RPM one, uh, can be a little too aggressive when you want to make careful deburring. So it's really nice to slow these down for a deburring operation or using a wire brush. You're not supposed to use wire wheels in these at full speed at all because those wires can, if the wheels aren't balanced for it, and then it can throw wires quite violently. They'll stick into you. But you can use a wire wheel on one of these if you're able to slow it down so it's not running full power. So this isn't a variable speed unit, but what we do with the router speed controller is we plug it in, make sure the speed controller is unplugged or off. We would engage the locking trigger mechanism here so this is on. And then we go ahead and turn this on. Just like so. I can tell you by the sound of that, it sounds like it's running at around the equivalent of maybe 50 volts, 40 to 50 volts AC. And so that kind of demonstrates what would be called the lower floor of this. So I'm going to also turn this up at full speed. And I'm going to maybe be, you'll be able to hear the difference between it being at full power and variable and then the slight boost that you get when you bypass the circuitry inside. Let me hold this. So kind of hard to hear in there, but uh, there is just a slight boost and I always thought that was a little odd, but it may be a function of the circuitry that's inside this. I was going to show what's inside here. Oh, I didn't want to mention that it does have a belt clip and I kind of thought that was actually interesting, but a good idea. Rather than having this box just drag around on the ground, you can clip it onto your belt so it's easier for you to access it uh, while you're using your power tool and I actually thought that was a wise choice. And just to quickly show what's inside this, and then I'll show how a Variac works, but just so people kind of have an idea. This would be essentially what's in almost all of these style units. Except for the expensive ones, because I couldn't believe an expensive one would use this kind of system. Uh, I would figure they'd have some more premium electronics that may be, you know, load sensing or something like that. But inside here, we're not going to pull it all the way out. We can see that it's properly grounded and they use, do use metal plate as a common ground. They insert the circuit board and then it's all soldered in place. The solders uh, are what you would expect from Harbor Freight. They're uh, effective. They do make a connection. They did get wetted, but 
uh, definitely quick and uh, not that great a quality, that's for sure. And then the little circuit will probably be easier to see this way. You can see that that's what's passing the whole 15 amps. That's a little triac or, you know, uh, semiconductor that's providing the variable speed. And it's screwed to the back of this metal plate so it'll act as a heat sink. Now, what I'm noticing inside here is that we do have a little potentiometer, a hole in some way of adjusting. There we go. It took me a minute to figure out. Actually, this is some relevant information. So I didn't really like the lowest speed, but it turns out that you can actually adjust it. This little hole, you'd have to, you can see a little uh, potentiometer, and there's a, I mean, that hole is an access for that potentiometer. So you just take a little flathead screwdriver. You want to be careful with this. And it turns out that this was turned all the way clockwise, and that is what sets, I would essentially be, bypass current or the minimum speed. It doesn't affect the maximum speed, and I just was testing this out. So this will be nice for people. When you get one of these, you may find that it just uh, is running too fast or maybe is just way too slow because somebody adjusted it differently from the factory. So we'll, you can listen here, and we'll do a little demonstration. It, as you turn it counterclockwise, it increases the maximum current. So the minimum speed increases counterclockwise and decreases clockwise as you'd adjust it running through the back of the board. We'll go and turn it on the variable speed portion. We'll make sure the dial is at all the way at the to the left or the slowest position. And now I'll adjust it. You'll want to be very careful. You'll want to do this when it is disconnected. Oh, and just in case, you know, I am not fiddling with the dial. I don't know why somebody would think that on a video like this, but just to make sure. So it's actually turned off just by adjusting this. So you can go from just about off. It actually has a huge amount of adjustment to off. And then you start coming up. There we go. And now, problem solved. Now I have a machine that actually runs, uh, or I have a router speed controller that has a nice low starting off speed. Now you can see in my demonstrations there while I was adjusting it, it kind of wanted to jump from nothing up to a minimum speed, and that's kind of a function of the variac or of the uh, little micro, the little uh, triac that's in here. And what's always kind of frustrated me, and what caused me to want to get one of these variacs, if I can get, uh, but that was neat. So now, if you ever get one of those router speed controllers, you know you can go inside it, and if you have some kind of adjustment like that inside them, then you can lower or adjust the minimum starting speed. So that unit actually just became a little bit less frustrating. The issue is with a Variac, it's much different. This, the way these work is they have their an auto transformer is a transformer that doesn't have two coils. It has two coils, and then one of the wires kind of shorts out along different areas of it. But these use a carbon brush that's a little bit extra wide, and it just rubs along the top. And I'll do a separate video probably of this uh, by itself. And the way the carbon brush kind of slowly migrates from one winding to another, it actually makes it for a nearly perfect. You can get fraction of a volt increments. Each one of the little notches on this is a one volt. These usually will vary from 0 to 140 volts, which is another thing that the router speed controller can't do, is give you a boost if you want it. Secondly, they don't have a perfect sine wave. I don't have an oscilloscope, so I can't really show what I'm talking about, but um, uh, the perfect sine waves makes the run, motors run cooler. And then the nature of this device is really allows perfectly fine control, literally 100% linear through the entire range. We'll do the little light bulb test here. Turn that on. In here, we can just just get it going. As a matter of fact, as compared to the minimum setting, we can actually see that light bulb's going barely, 
just barely. It's surprising how well the camera picks that up is it is just a very tiny orange. If it will, you can still see it's glowing at 10 volts, which is kind of surprising as we move up. We can see about here is where the router speed controller was, maybe in that range, which seems to be about the 30 to 35 volt range. A little lower than my initial estimates, but as you can see, we can go up and it just progressively gets brighter and brighter. Same thing with plugging in an electric motor. So if we do that with one of these, and how do you like that little socket where you can plug a light bulb into a wall socket? Kind of handy. One thing I don't recommend doing uh, don't take one of these and plug it in the wall and then like maybe stick your finger into it or something. That's why these aren't very common is because this is obviously uh, could be a pretty dangerous item just plugging a light bulb socket into a wall, but they are handy. So if we take the power tool and do the same thing here, we're still off. This is why I like this and I actually use it with die grinders. I've used it with larger half inch drills that don't have variable speed capability. Um, as well as some other, you know, various projects. It's really kind of handy to have one of these. This is an SE uh, Superior Electric Power Stat, and these come in like 20 amp versions. They make some pretty big ones, and there's many situations where these are used industrially, and that's why it's set up just to be mounted, say, on a wall or something like that. So anyway, we'll turn it on. We've got this running, and now you can see the difference. I can hear the motor humming, but we don't have enough voltage to actually get that turning. I probably could use some new bearings in this. So there we go. We just got it started. Right at about 32 volts. As soon as it starts turning, we can even drop it down some. So as you can see with uh, one of these, I can get it to the point where it's just barely able to turn over at all. And I can just increase it a touch. And... Just have the most extreme level of speed control where, okay, maybe that's not quite enough. We can just give it a little bit more. And you might find a speed like this or somewhere around that range would be just great for deburring. So that's why I use this. It's just because it's so much nicer just to be able to have a nice fine adjustment. And to have the tool be a little happier because I'm feeding it a sine wave instead of some chopped up electrical wave. Obviously, there's huge inconvenience with trying to lug around something like this, which is like 10 or 15 pounds. And is obviously doesn't have the durability or physical durability. It has electrical durability of the router speed controller. But that was just a quick demonstration of how uh, the difference between what would be a router speed controller and something that would be an optimal method of varying speed on power tools. Anyway, this video is more supposed to be about this Harbor Freight controller rather than just generally uh, discussing vary, varying the speed of electric motors. Uh, but this is a good kind of discussion video about that as well. And, and because uh, I've run into a lot of power tools which have burned up variable speed triggers, and it really turns out that with these triac style and with the, what's in drills, uh, many people will do longer, more continuous operations, trying to hold the trigger, you know, halfway through. And they really, the circuits really don't like that. They kind of advertise them as being able to run continuously like that. Uh, people may remember Sawzalls used to have speed dials. Even some of the, the newest 15 amp one does, but it works differently than the older ones did. And there were, I found a lot of those used ones, repaired them and sold them because the little circuit that's in the vent of those older sawzalls, uh, these would be like the initial super sawzalls, would just get burned up from running at that variable speed and people using them for a couple, three hours straight. They just didn't like it. The motors would be fine. The triggers would be fine. But that little circuit would want to uh, burn up. And that's something that would never happen with the Variac. The only thing that would happen is the motor eventually could possibly overheat if you're overloading it a lot and it's spinning slow so it's not able to get sufficient airflow and that's one thing to point out and one thing that i do worry about this is it does seem like a pretty robust unit with a nice big heat sink uh, but i worry about anybody who would use this in a production environment and if they do really would last hours and hours of use just at mid speed all day long rather than 
uh, making a few passes, that kind of thing, using slower startup speeds and then going up to full speed. Anyway, that was probably an over-involved video, but I've had some lengthy discussions about these things with uh, some people, so I just kind of uh, really wanted to get into more detail. I will do a future video, probably the next video, just to make it easy, just getting a little more detail into this fairy act and maybe popping off the cover so you can see what's inside one of these. Anyway, that will conclude another review and video from Caddis Maximus, and I really appreciate everybody who subscribed and who is watching, and uh, if you are watching and haven't subscribed, and there's plenty of you, please do subscribe. Anyway, Caddis Maximus out.